We've been tracking rounds of rain since early this morning, and it continues right now. And the problem is it doesn't stop until tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. I'll take a closer look for you. With even more rain in the forecast, Scott County Emergency Management officials are preparing for flooding. The Wildcats winning season continues with a victory over the Florida Gators in the SEC tournament. We have reactions to the win. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. The winning streak continues. The Cats moving on in the SEC tournament in Nashville with a win this afternoon over the Florida Gators. And it is very wet down there. We will go back live to Nashville with team coverage in just a moment. But first, we are tracking the potential for flooding across the state tonight and into tomorrow. We begin with WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell and a check of the forecast. You know, the, those folks down there are dealing with the same thing that we are dealing with here, and that is plenty of rain. And they're going to be right in the middle of it, too, over the next couple of days. Right now, outside, you can see on our sky cam, what I've done is I've kind of zoomed in on some of the standing water that we have here, and many of you will start to see this. That's Winchester Road that you see right there, and here you can see the water already beginning to stand. More rain expected throughout the rest of the evening, tonight, and especially into the early morning hours tomorrow. So you're going to have more areas like that, maybe with even higher water coming into play. Because look at Defender; it is action-packed across the board, from one end of the Commonwealth to the other. Very hard to find a dry spot anywhere. So the rain. Rolls through the area tonight, and then we see how much extra rainfall we can get. This is the additional stuff. Already picking up close to an inch, we're getting another inch and a quarter, maybe inch and a half with this run of the data, and it seems pretty close to what I was thinking. So you've got that little swath right along Interstate 64 and little points to the north that get another inch or so of rainfall by 11 o'clock tomorrow night, putting us very close to that three inch overall total that we've been talking about for the past couple of days. Lighter amounts down to our south, but you can still see some moderate and heavy bands push through the area. We'll track all of it, that rain coming through the area hour by hour, coming up in just a few minutes. Jim, thank you. Kentucky's first step in the march to national title number nine is complete. The Cats are headed to the next round of the SEC tournament with a win this afternoon over Florida. WKYT's Lee K. Howard is here with highlights, and Florida gave them a little bit of a battle there, at least at the first half. You know, they really did. It looked a lot like the previous two meetings of the year between these two teams. A battle in the first half before Kentucky pulled away. You know, John Calipari, he's never been a big fan of the SEC tournament, but even he knows his team is attempting to do something special in their pursuit of perfection. Second meeting between the Cats and the Gators in less than a week. Florida had it going early. Casey Hill left open under the hoop, makes it a five-point Gator lead, and John Calipari needs an early water break. Andrew Harrison provided the offense for the Wildcats in the first half, hits his three there, ties the game at 12. He had seven first-half points off the Florida turnover. Devin Booker escorts this basketball to the hoop, giving Kentucky its first lead since it was 4-2. to two. Wildcats up by four at the break. Second half now, Aaron Harrison drops the dime in transition. He was huge. Gives UK their first double-digit lead. Caps an 11-2 Kentucky run. Willie Colley-Stein lobs it up to his hyphenated brother, Carl Anthony Towns, for the finish. 50-42 Kentucky, 13 points, 11 boards for Towns. Tyler Eulis then seals the victory with this long three at the end of the shot clock. That will get the crowd on its feet. One down, two to go in Nashville. Kentucky moving on 64 to 49, now 32 and 0 on this season. An unbelievable game for the Wildcats. A big win for them as well. Guys? Thank you, Lee Kay. And we heard from UK coach John Calipari shortly after that win. WKYT's Rob Bromley is live outside Bridgestone Arena in Nashville with reaction to that win. Hi, Rob. Hello, the Wildcats get the job done, but listen to these figures. They shoot only 37.5%. They make only three three-pointers on the day. Willie Cauley-Stein had only two baskets, but they pull away and they beat Florida by 15. Uh, John Calipari afterwards definitely wanted to see his team come out and play with more energy. The reality of it is we didn't play with as much energy as Florida played with to start the game, and they came in. You know, and, and I told him at halftime, you, you, if that's what we have in store, like that's how we're going to do this, we're going we're gonna to have some problems. And um, but I thought in the later part of the game we found the combination of Andrew, Aaron, Tyler, Trey, 
and Carl or Dakari, that's what we did. And see, that's that's the advantage we have. And the Wildcats now semifinals of the SEC tournament tomorrow afternoon. They will get the winner of the LSU-Auburn game that is going on right now. The last I saw, LSU was up by just three. So we have to wait and see who it is. Still a ways to go in that game. But the Wildcats make it 32 in a row, and that now equals the longest winning streak in school history based over two seasons. You remember those two in the 1950s combined, 32 straight. Sam Amber, back to you. Rob, thank you. It sure is something special, that's for sure. Bridgestone Arena was a sea of blue for today's game. Oh, it was packed with blue and white. Thousands of big blue fans have made the trip to Nashville to cheer on the Cats. WKYT's Jennifer Palumbo is live outside the arena with more on how fans are showing their support, whether they have tickets or not. Right, Jennifer? That's right, Sam. They, it's a very expensive ticket right now for fans who want to see the game tomorrow and didn't already have tickets. We're here outside the arena. The fans have taken over Broadway, the Ryman Auditorium, Grand Ole Opry just up the street. They're enjoying the sights and celebrating the Cats' big win. Bridgestone Arena, it looked more like Rupp Arena today. And for many of these fans, including a group of girlfriends from Richmond, they're following the Cats all the way on their road and they hope that it ends with a ninth national title in Indianapolis. Well, it's all about the girlfriends because we've been together for years and we love the Wildcats. Go Big Blue! We've been together, we started in Gatlinburg and now we're here to cheer on our cats because we love them, the Big, Big Blue! We want them to go all the way and be number one this year. Yes. We're going to cheer them on and keep it going with them. Is Nashville the final stop, or do we keep going all the way to Indy? Oh, no, it's done. It is on my Donkey Kong. <laughs> Outside Bridgestone Arena, the scalpers are out. The guys holding the I Need Ticket signs, they're selling the tickets. And UK fans, tens of thousands of them came down here, but Bridgestone Arena only holds 19,375. It's smaller than Rupp. So UK fans who aren't able to get into the games have watched them at bars today, and chances are there are going to be even more UK fans in bars than inside Bridgestone Arena tomorrow. Live in Nashville, I'm Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. All right, Jennifer, that ticket's like gold down there. Thank you very much. And again, the uh, Cats play the winner of the Auburn LSU game that she was talking about. You can see UK play at 1 tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. Well, it's rainy in Nashville, and it's rainy back home, and the wet weather is going to stick around, it looks like, through much of tomorrow. Yeah, and with so much rain in the forecast, many communities are keeping an eye on flood-prone areas. WKYT's Mark Barber went to Scott County to see how they're preparing for any potential high-water problems. Here in the Scott County Emergency Operations Center, people are closely monitoring the radar for heavy rain. Officials say they are most concerned about these six areas marked with red taps because they say they will most likely flood. As the rain comes down, the threat of flooding goes up. Emergency Management Agency Major Michael Hannigan says the ground is already saturated, so the rain could lead to flooding very quickly. At Payne Avenue and North Broadway, the Elkhorn Creek is already starting to swell up onto its banks. Since the rain has been coming down steadily since 7.30 this morning, Hannigan says they have been taking callers who have spotted high water and they have been monitoring their creek gauges as well as the radar. An inch to three inches of rain are expected to fall in Scott County. While those numbers may seem small, Hannigan says they can lead to some very big problems. Uh, if we stay closer to one, we're going to be looking at minor flooding, uh, road impacts, th things that would be short-lived. If we get the full three inches that they're talking about, we may have houses that are underwater for several days and be looking at a long-term impact. Hannigan says he's hoping they dodge a bullet this time, but he says if three inches of rain does come down, they will switch to response mode. He tells me that they could put up temporary shelters for people if they are no longer able to stay in their homes. In Scott County, Mark Barber, WKYT.
The emergency manager says they will start doing road checks to make sure that roads are still passable if heavy rain continues to fall. Police have arrested four people for a violent home invasion. Timothy Cobb, Preston Wells, Damian Davis, and Jacob Fields are charged with robbery. Police say three of the four men confessed to yesterday's robbery at Shillito Park Apartments. Police say the men posed as DEA agents and forced their way into an apartment. Court documents show they tied the victims up, held a gun to their head, and rob them. Charges have been reinstated for a man accused of stabbing his girlfriend and threatening to eat a police officer. Our county by county coverage begins in Clark County. Brandon Hocker is charged with assault, terroristic threatening, and being a persistent felony offender. A judge dismissed the charges three months ago to allow Hocker to undergo treatment at Eastern State Hospital. The Winchester Sun reports that he's about to be released, and that's why the charges have been reinstated. In Boone County, police need help finding the robber behind a string of holdups. The sheriff's office has released these surveillance pictures of the suspect. There have been four robberies between late January and the beginning of this month. Three gas stations and a Dollar General have all been robbed. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. A beloved retired Fayette County Circuit Judge is being remembered today. Judge Armand Angelusi died this morning at the age of 94. Fayette County Commonwealth Attorney Ray Larson shared his memories of Angelusi with us. WKYT's Rebecca Smith has more on the judge's life. Fayette Commonwealth Attorney Ray Larson has fond memories of retired Fayette Circuit Judge Armand Andalucci, who died Friday morning at the age of 94. He was a tough guy. He was really a tough guy really had little or no tolerance for these slugs that would victimize other people. Larson's also seen a different side to the hard-nosed judge. Angelucci's son, Joseph, was a Fayette County Sheriff's deputy who was murdered in the line of duty in 1988. I prosecuted the killer, the murderer of his son, Joe. He was just crushed. Over the course of the investigation and trial, WKYT talked to Angelucci about the death of his son. Here's a snippet from one of those interviews. He was part of our life, and when, when he died, we died along with it. As for Larson, he says one thing in particular resounds in his ear when he thinks about his friend. Never do anybody a favor. And if you treat everybody the same, um, then you never have to look over your shoulder to figure out how did I deal with this person or that person. In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Judge Angelucci's visitation will be from 5 to 7 Tuesday night at Millward on Trent Boulevard. His funeral is at 10 Wednesday morning at Cathedral of Christ the King. He'll be buried at Calvary Cemetery. Police continue to search for suspects in the shootings of two officers in Ferguson, Missouri. The officers were shot Wednesday night during a protest in front of the city's police department. Protests have been ongoing since an officer shot and killed Michael Brown back in August. Both injured officers are recovering at home. Police say they're chasing down every lead to try and find the gunman. Military officials say they need better weather in order to recover the wreckage of a Black Hawk helicopter. A chopper went down off Santa Rosa Island in Florida during a training exercise Tuesday night. Eleven soldiers and Marines died in the crash. Dense fog and rough seas have prevented crews from recovering the bodies. Three people remain hospitalized following a tour bus crash. The bus carrying the Indiana Tech bowling team overturned on I-65 in Clark County, Indiana yesterday. The team was on the way to a tournament in Tennessee. All of those hospitalized are in satisfactory or fair condition. So far, investigators have not determined what caused the crash. An American health care worker arrived back in the U.S. this morning to be treated for Ebola. The patient is in serious condition at the National Institutes of Health in Maryland. The person's name, age, and gender have not been released. The person contracted Ebola virus while volunteering in Sierra Leone. It's a pretty dramatic crash, all caught on tape. Surveillance video capturing a driver who plowed his car right through the glass window of a Colorado pizza restaurant. The car hit a pedestrian during the crash. The woman managed to jump off the hood and run from the car. Uh, she was not seriously hurt. Looks like she was, but she wasn't. Witnesses think that the driver mistook the gas pedal for the brake. 
She's been a. It's time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A recall alert for Chevy Volt owners. General Motors is recalling 64,000 of the cars because they're just too quiet. Some Volt owners say they forget to turn their car off because it's nearly silent. It can be dangerous if the car is in a garage because the gas engine can kick in and cause a carbon monoxide buildup. A software update will keep the car quiet but shut it off after an hour and a half of. Of idle time. Kia is also recalling more than 200,000 Soul SUVs. The gas pedals on 2014 and 2015 models can bend or break. Dealers will add rubber supports beneath the pedal stopper at no cost to the owners. People trying to diet could soon have a new tool to help them lose weight. Danielle Nottingham shows us the high tech device that tracks what you eat and even alerts you when you've eaten too much. This necklace could become the latest way to keep your diet in check. The WearSense has a sensor that uses vibrations to measure when you're eating and drinking. It will tell them how much they have been eating, so it will help them with their portion control. It will tell them if they've been snacking too much. Engineers at UCLA tested the necklace on 30 people. They showed us how the device tells users what they ate, how quickly they ate, and even gives suggestions when you miss a meal. It will tell them if they have been dehydrated because they did, didn't drink enough water. The necklace counts how many times you swallow and the time you spend chewing. Users set goals of how much they want to eat and drink on an app, and the app alerts users if they overindulge. With this device, there is no cheating. We know exactly how much you are eating. If you take the device off, we will know that. But bottom line, it makes it easy for people. Researchers say the necklace is up to 90% accurate. The device could be available later this year. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Los Angeles. Researchers plan to expand the necklaces used to help people quit smoking and help patients keep up with taking their medication. For more health, education, and consumer news, just go to WKYT.com and click on Better Living. Now, here's what's coming up for you at 530.